ओके हेलो गाइस सो नाउ वी शेल बी डिस्कसिंग रिगार्डिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ब्रेकल प्लेक्सेस ओके सो वी शेल कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ब्रेकल प्लेक्सेस सो व्हाट आर द इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स इन द ब्रेकल प्लेक्सेस एवरीथिंग वी शेल डिस्कस नाउ इफ यू सी गाइस ब्रेकल प्लेक्सेस लेट अस से दीज आर योर वर्टिब्रा दीज आर योर वर्टिब्रा फॉर एग्जांपल लेट अस से ओके and let us say that this is the sternum okay and uh, here you have got your clavicle like this so actually brachial plexus is of three parts so let us say that one i mean not from the vertebra the, let us say these are your spinal uh, cord segments like like c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 right so these are the spinal cord segments so from the roots of those spinal cord segments let us say you have got a group of nerves that are running down like this now these group of nerves guys these group of nerves they come across your uh, clavicle they cross the clavicle like this and they come down and they enter into your arm so they are coming down all the way like this uh, right and they are entering they are passing below the clavicle and then they are entering into your arm so this is what is your brachial plexus this is what is called as your brachial plexus so this brachial plexus is of three parts this brachial plexus is of three parts one is called as so this is the first part this is the third part and below the behind the clavicle we have got the second part okay so there are three parts one is above the clavicle we have got the supraclavicular part supraclavicular part right supraclavicular part next we have got the retroclavicular part because it is behind the clavicle retroclavicular part and next we have got the infraclavicular part infraclavicular part now all of you know that brachial plexus has got what it has got a roots trunks divisions and cords right so what are the structures that are what are the divisions or what are the segments in the brachial plexus we have got roots roots continue as trunks trunks continue as divisions and divisions continue as cords all of you know this right now important thing is that in the supraclavicular region here okay in this supraclavicular region you have got two important things that roots as well as trunks okay next in the retroclavicular part you have got only divisions and in the infraclavicular part the leftover one is cords you have got cords so if there is any kind of injury about the clavicle then mostly the roots and uh, trunks are affected without any problem to the divisions okay so if there is clavicular fracture then the divisions might be affected and below the clavicle the cords are affected so as i have already told you we have got the supraclavicular retroclavicular as well as the infraclavicular right so supraclavicular has got the roots of and the trunks because all of you know that this is the initial part where the clavicle uh, i mean the brachial plexus is emerging so the roots and trunks are common here right now let us draw the brachial plexus guys so that that would be easy instead of looking at the picture which i already put here itself okay so look at this thing over here so brachial plexus basically it originates all the way from the spinal segments of c5 till t1 right so this is c5 this is c6 this is c7 this is c8 as well as t1 these are not the vertebral segments in fact these are what these are the spinal segments now coming out of these spinal segments coming out of these spinal segments right what are the structures that come out of this spinal segments guys the first important structure that comes out of this spinal segment are the roots right so from each spinal segment you have got a root that is coming out this is called c5 root this is called c6 root next is called c7 root then we have got t uh, c8 root and t1 root okay next important thing the roots of c5 and c6 both of them join together and form this structure called as trunk because after the roots we have got trunks so c5 c6 join together to form trunk in the same way c8 and t1 also join together to form trunk if c5 c6 together form trunk c8 t1 together form trunk then what about c7 
C7 is left alone. C7 alone forms a trunk. Okay. So the next pink portion which we have covered here, one is the roots, then we have got the trunks. Now what will happen to these trunks? There are three trunks now. What will happen to each trunk? Each trunk will divide into two branches. One is called anterior branch, another one is called as posterior branch. Look here, this is called as the posterior branch and we have got an anterior branch. Again, we have got a posterior branch like this. Next, we have got an anterior branch. And finally, again, we have got a posterior branch like this. And finally, we have got an anterior branch, right? So these are called, these posterior branches are called as posterior divisions. These green color lines which I have drawn are called as anterior divisions. So all these posterior divisions, they join together, they join together and finally they form what is called as posterior cord. This is called as a posterior cord. Next important thing is that posterior cord is formed by, yes, posterior cord is formed by joining of all the posterior divisions. But another important thing is that the both, both of these anterior divisions, whatever are there, of let us say C5, C6 and C7. So the anterior divisions of C5, C6 and C7, they join like this and form a cord and this is called as lateral cord. And the last one is left alone, this forms a medial cord. So we have got three different types of cords. One is called posterior cord, one is called lateral cord, another one is called as the medial cord medial cord so that is the reason why i was telling you the last segments are always cords between the trunks and between the cords what you have in the center are called as divisions how many divisions six anterior posterior anterior posterior and anterior posterior so this is how you draw a brachial plexus the most important thing right now i'm going to discuss before discussing the posterior lateral as well as medial cord branches are the nerves that are coming from the C5, C6 and C7. Concentrate here very carefully guys. From the root of C5. From the root of C5 like this. From the root of C6. From the root of C7. From the root of C5, C6, C7. There is a nerve. Very long nerve that is formed. So the, the lines which have drawn are very long. So you also call it as long thoracic nerve, long thoracic nerve, right? I already told you in my previous lectures that long thoracic nerve supplies your serratus anterior muscle. If someone gives a hard blow onto your chest, right? For example, while kickboxing, when someone punches you on your chest on the lateral side here, this nerve will be damaged. So when this nerve will be damaged, patient will have winging of scapula. So I've discussed this along before right so i want you to watch those lectures before you watch the brachial plexus lecture so that would result in winging of scapula so this is about the long thoracic nerve next important thing is that from this c5 root okay from this c5 root a small nerve that comes up this is called as dorsal scapular now keep this thing in mind this is called as dorsal scapular nerve that comes from the root of c5 Next important thing, next important thing is that from the trunk, from the first trunk there, a small nerve comes, it goes up and there is a small nerve that comes down. I mean there is a branch of trunk going up and there is a branch of trunk that is coming down. So this is called as suprascapular, suprascapular nerve and the other one is called as nerve to subclavius nerve to subclavius now keep this thing in mind i am putting the, the i am putting this thing again down here all of you keep this thing in mind one very important thing i want to tell you here is that guys that we have got c5 we have got c6 right now from c5 and from c6 we have got two things that are coming out right let us say uh, this is a root of c5 this is a root of c6 and what did i tell you in the starting c5 root c6 root both of them join together and form a trunk. And what did I tell you further? That trunk will divide into posterior division like this and we have got an anterior division. 
and I have also added few important things that on C5 here we have got a nerve that is coming this is called as dorsal scapular nerve and two nerves coming on the trunk one going up this is called as suprascapular one going down this is called as nerve to subclavius so look here guys if I make a circle all the way here if I make a circle all the way here and if I shade this region now this region whatever you can see here this region whatever you can see here this point this pink color shade whatever I'm doing here this is nothing but called as your herbs point what is this point here this is called as your herbs point what is this this is called as your herbs point so if I ask you how many nerves are involved in this herbs point uh, can we name it guys one is C5 C6 two nerves next important thing is that is dorsal scapular nerve involved this is dorsal scapular nerve is it involved here no it is not involved right but what is involved in the trunk we have got two nerves one is called as suprascapular suprascapular another one is nerve to subclavius or subclavian nerve nerve to subclavius after that we have got divisions also anterior and posterior division right we have got anterior division we have got posterior division so how many nerves guys overall one two three four five six so all these six nerves are present in this herbs point all these six nerves are present in this herbs point for example during birth when you are catching hold of the shoulders and pulling out of the vagina if there is there can be an injury to the brachial plexus so first important uh, reason how the brachial plexus is injured is during the birth during the birth right second important reason is that if let us say you are sitting under a, under a tree let us say a branch of that tree fell on your shoulder here so when the branch of the tree falls on your shoulder this brachial the, the direct injury happens to your brachial plexus so in that case also the brachial plexus might be damaged right so if there is a heavy fall heavy fall where on the shoulder heavy fall on your shoulder that would also lead to the damage of the brachial plexus that would also lead to the damage to the brachial plexus okay so these are the main two reasons so in this case what will happen is that patient will have a specific palsy called as herbs palsy now in this herbs palsy how will the patient hand look is that the patient's hand is completely adapted to the body and it is medially rotated like this okay it is adducted and medially rotated why this this type of hand is called as a policeman deformity or policeman tip deformity or the waiter tip deformity okay so this is called as this herbs point damage will lead to what it would lead to herbs palsy it would lead to herbs palsy and that would in turn uh, result in the policeman tip deformity policeman tip deformity or you can also call it as waiter's deformity waiter's tip deformity the way the way they ask the tip in this way right so this is called waiter's tip deformity okay so this is all the important points which you need to know regarding the brachial plexus and the last important thing which you need to know regarding the brachial plexus is the nerves that are coming out of the lateral cord the medial cord as well as the posterior cord okay so let us put a side heading of the nerves that are coming of the posterior cord lateral cord and the medial cord medial cord so how do i remember them how do you remember them is that you have to remember by a mnemonic let us say for posterior cord you remember a mnemonic called as ulnar when i tell ulnar u stands for upper subscapularis upper sub scapularis l stands for lower subscapularis lower subscapularis n stands for nerve to latissimus dorsi nerve to latissimus what is the nerve to latissimus dorsi guys the nerve to latissimus dorsi is your thoracodorsal nerve okay latissimus dorsi or i can simply call it as thoracodorsal nerve okay next a stands for axillary nerve a stands for axillary nerve and finally r stands for the radial nerve 
radial nerve. So these are all the branches of the posterior cord. Now let us look at the branches of the lateral cord. Lateral cord, how do you remember? L stands for LML. What does L stand for? L stands for lateral pectoral nerve. M stands for musculocutaneous nerve, musculocutaneous nerve and another L stands for lateral root, lateral root of median nerve, lateral root of median nerve and finally we shall be discussing what are the structures, I mean what are the branches of the medial cord, you can remember by mnemonic M for you, M for you, LML. Alnar, okay. What does M for you stand for? M stands for if there is lateral pectoral now, there will also be medial pectoral now. So we have got medial pectoral now. Next, there is musculocutaneous now. Now we have got medial cutaneous. Medial cutaneous nerve of arm. If there is lateral root of median nerve. There will also be medial root of median nerve. There will also be medial root of median nerve. And finally, we have got ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve. So, these are the branches of the medial cord. Right? So, we shall be continuing. These are the branches of the medial cord.